Hi everyone. Power BI data flows is the most underrated and overrated feature in Power BI. I've seen this many times in architecture where it's overrated, overused, uh, and instead of, let's say, for example, uh, data factory data flows, and that will limit the ability of the organization or the data group to exchange data or publish data to other uh, groups who are using different tools that are not compatible with the Power BI uh, in this case. In the underrated part, sometimes it's never used and, and it's actually giving you lots of uh, capabilities if you would like to have your own uh, self-service data mark. So in this video, I'm going to discuss where to put the data flows in our architecture overall. And also because of uh, as a subsequent to this, we need to have uh, a way for calling the refresh of these data flows from um, other services like data factory, for example, data factory pipeline. So I'm going to start with the whiteboard as usual. I like to use this um, metaphor for the data services as a tree. So if, if your operational databases are here, these are the roots of your tree, and your main pipelines are the trunk and the main branches, so this one and these. Now, the small branches this is the last part of your pipelines where after that will be the business users starting to consume the data. This is the best place to put the Power BI data flow. If you put the data flows here, and instead of the trunk area, then will be harder for you to share the data, let's say for Databricks users, because data flows to share the data, you need to put the result of the data flow to a data lake. And you, in this case, you need to provide your own data lake, but there is a, a major flow in this uh, architecture, which, which you have to make sure, make sure that this data lake is not isolated, uh, like network wise isolated, which is a security risk. Not many organizations would like to take. That's why it will limit the ability of sharing the data. If you never used it at all, then you are limiting the ability of having your own like data marts and, and sharing, the, sharing the data flows among users and having the user doing self-service for their own uh, data reporting needs. So it is very important, but the, the best place to use it is in these small branches. Okay, so that means we need to have uh, let's say here is data factory or pipelines generally. And these pipeline will do some transformation. And at the end, it needs to call the data flow refresh. And this is exactly what I'm going to do uh, today with you in this video, how to refresh data flow from the previous step. And I'm, in this case, I'm going to use uh, data factory pipeline as example of the previous steps. It can be used by other, like I, I can do the same thing using PowerShell script or Python or any other tool as well. To make granting permissions easy, first I created a security group in Azure AD and I called it Power BI Caller Services SG and I added all the service principles and the managed identities that I'm going to use in my demo. In the Power BI admin portal, what I will do is under the developer settings, I'm going to allow service principle to use Power BI APIs. This is the permission that we need to have. Now, when we enable it, we have two options. One option is to enable it for the entire organization, which it should work. However, it's not the secure option because that means any service principle can connect to the Power BI. I want to limit it to a specific service principles, the service principle that I put them in the security group. And that's why I'm going to use my security group here that I just created in step one. 
After we allowed the permission um, for the service principles to access the Power BI API on the tenant level, on the admin portal, I want to now give permission on my workspace. So I have a specific workspace and I have a data flow inside it. This is the data flow that I need to refresh. So I'm going to go to the access. And what I will do is I'm going to give permission to my group uh, to be an admin on this workspace. Now let's dive into the API. If you search for the Power BI REST API, you will find that we have a group of APIs for the data flows. Now the API that we are interested in is the refresh data flow. We look at this API here in the documentation, it's a post API, so that means we, we will require to provide a, a body. And it has two parameters in the URL, which is group ID and data flow ID. Group ID is the workspace ID that contains the data flow. How to get the, the ID? Simple. If I'm inside my workspace, if you look here in the URL, you will find a GUID. This is the ID of the workspace. Okay. Similarly, if you go to the data flow, you will find another ID at the end after data flows, and this is the ID of the data flow. So now we have all the information required by our API. What else? The body, it has only one uh, mandatory uh, requirement, which is the notify option. I need to give uh, the option for notification because this is asynchronous process. So when, when the API is hit, it will return the result right away. But if something happened and there is a failure, we need to provide a way for notification. So mail on failure, for example, that's one of the options. And we have other options. You can go back to documentation for, for the rest of them. Now let's execute this by using our data factory managed identity. We allowed service principles to access the Power BI APIs. However, in the next steps, I'm going to use managed identities and not service principles. So why and what's the difference between them? Service principle is, is identity used by applications. So there is uh, a secret, so there's ID and secret, similar to username and password. And there is no way to have multi-factor authentication because applications and code will not do multi-factor authentication. MFA is designed only for humans. The challenge with, with the service principle is there is always a secret. So what if someone leaked the secret outside the organization, then anyone from outside can access the service using the secret. Managed identity, on the other hand, it does not have a secret and it has two types. System assigned managed identity, where it's bound to a specific Azure service, for example, data factory. Every time I create data factory, there is a managed identity created for it. And in some services, not by default, then you need to enable it, but there is always managed identity for this service. Its lifetime is the same lifetime as the service itself. You cannot dis disjoin them. And once the service is deleted, then this managed identity is deleted as well. So this, that means, that's what mean with the lifetime. Uh, this is the system assigned. The user assigned uh, identity is identity still does not have a password but you can assign it to services uh, by choice. You, you choose what services can be assigned for it. And in this case, it's not one-to-one -one relation like the system assigned, it's one-to-many relation where one, one user assigned manager identity, identity can be assigned to multiple services in this case. In Data Factory, I have a very simple pipeline with one activity only. It's a web activity and in the settings, I have the URL. This is my URL for the for the data flow. It has I, I didn't do any concatenation. I just put everything hard coded. So the ID of the workspace and the ID 
of the uh, data flow as, as I showed you before. The method is post and I'm adding the body for the notification, mail on failure. Now, when we go for the authentication, we need to provide um, authentication using the system assigned managed identity. This is the managed identity of this specific uh, data, data factory. And you have in this case to provide a resource because when we are getting a token, uh, basically what happens is we have two REST API calls. One, the first REST API call, this is for Azure AD to obtain a token so we can communicate with the Power BI service. And to obtain a specific token for a specific service, you need to provide the resource. And in this case, the resource has to be this. This is one resource type for uh, it, it's in the format of the URI and it, it's, it is the resource for all the Power BI. It doesn't matter my tenant or your tenant. All the tenants are the same. This is to tell Azure ED the token that I'm asking you to get me is for this specific service or this specific resource. And this is part of the auth um, uh, authorization and that can be discussed in, in, a, in a later video. Now, to try this, let's give it a try. And succeed it doesn't take much time uh, very quick in four seconds because the process is asynchronous right now if I go back to my data flow I see my data flow is being refreshed as we speak Now repeating the same procedure, exactly the same, uh, with the same security group inside a Synapse workspace, it does not work. Um, I'm, I'm checking with the product group, maybe, maybe there is something missing, but uh, I tried it many times and the same procedure that works in Data Factory standalone does not work inside the Synapse workspace. However, there is a workaround. Uh, I found that if we are not using the system assigned managed identity and we are using user assigned managed identity, and I, I spoke about the user assigned managed identity uh, briefly in my one hour video uh, about the, the Synapse security. I'm going to put it here in the link. And if you use user assigned managed identity and you choose your credential that is pointing to this managed identity, then if I try to execute this again, Debugging. And succeeded.